what does this airplane, this airplane, and this airplane all have in common? Let's find out on Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. And by the way, today is Christmas. I'd like to extend season's greetings to all my viewers and subscribers, and thank you so much for your support of the channel throughout the year. Best to you for the holidays. Well, what these three aircraft have in common, I'll throw in one more for good measure, is they were all competitors in something called a fly-off competition. In the year 2000, two manufacturing teams led by Lockheed Martin and Boeing entered experimental concept demonstrators in a fly-off competition for a multi-billion dollar DOD contract to build a 21st century multi-role joint strike fighter or JSF for the United States and the United Kingdom. As a senior flight rated Air Force artist, I was assigned to fly chase missions with both these aircraft to document significant JSF program milestones and to produce original paintings for the US Air Force Office of Public Affairs. Here are the two competitors. On the left, the Boeing X-32. On the right, the Lockheed Martin X-35. The Lockheed team was composed of Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and BAE, BAE Systems from the United Kingdom. There would be three versions of the airplane. For the Air Force, a conventional takeoff and landing. For the uh, Marine Corps and Royal Navy and Royal Air Force, a vertically capable uh, joint strike fighter uh, with the title Stovall, which stood for short takeoff and vertical landing. For the Navy, carrier takeoff and landing. On November 7th, 2000, I flew with Mr. Simon Hargreaves of BEA Systems, a former Royal Air Force Harrier pilot. This would be a four-hour test flight in the F-16 to observe the X-35's first aerial refueling, and technically the first aerial refueling of any designated X-plane. Here's the X-35 in position on runway 04, and we are gonna perform what's called an in-flight pickup. And the way this works is the uh, chase aircraft are aligned on the runway. We take off first. I'm in the red and white airplane and a Lockheed photographer is in the all-white airplane. We make a closed pattern, and in uh, synchronization with the uh, X-35's takeoff, 30-second countdown, we pull alongside, and the X-35 takes to the air. Here we are climbing out to the uh, operating area, and we're going to rendezvous with a KC-135E tanker. Here's a photo of the X-35 that day uh, taken from the boomer station of the KC-135. And I should mention that this was taken by, at that time, Lockheed Martin photographer Judson Bromer. Uh, sadly, Judson was lost in an F-16 accident just six months later. But a great tribute and a wonderful photographer and a really great guy. Here's my shot of the Lockheed photographer in the white F-16. The X-35 did a long series of uh, pre-contact formation, contact with the boom, and then actual passing of gas and uh, aerial active aerial refueling at different speeds, um, all different parameters. It was a long series. And here's the Lockheed photographer's shot of the X-35 on the boom with uh, my airplane up at the right-hand side. Nice shot of the X-35 and the KC-135 in a turn. <clears throat> and then it was our turn to uh, take on uh, some fuel from the 135. And it's an impressive maneuver. The rest of the flight was uh, devoted to uh, all sorts of different configurations, flap settings, gear down, gear up, uh, typical test flight routine, uh, just expanding the envelope and... Uh, uh, qualifying the X-35 in different phases of its flight test regime. Here we are, uh, RTB, return to base. Uh, you see the lake bed below. And we're going to start a long 
descending uh, circling approach. Here we are turning final to runway 04. And if you've ever heard the term over the numbers, this is it. The X-35 uh, touched down for a full stop landing. We then went around and did a closed pattern and came in for our full stop landing. The X-35B was the vertical takeoff and land, uh, vertical takeoff capable uh, aircraft. And it had initial testing at Edwards and then the subsequent uh, testing at Pax River in uh, Maryland, the Navy flight test base. Next aircraft was the Boeing X-32. Uh, an impressive looking airplane in the production form, uh, <clears throat> but this was the actual concept demonstrator and uh, an interesting configuration. But the production version was to look like this. It had horizontal uh, stabilators and a different nose, different uh, wing. It was just an entirely different airplane. But for whatever reason, Boeing's concept demonstrator, uh, the X-32, looked like this. It was a very different airplane. On December 21st, I was assigned to fly with senior NASA test pilot Dana Purifoy to chase the X-32's first flight to Mach 1. Here we are about to depart the NASA Dryden ramp in an F-18B, which is a non-carrier land-based Hornet. And there's the X-32 on the ramp. Uh, these ground shots were taken by my dear friend Tony Landis, and here we are uh, coming down uh, Taxiway Bravo on the way to uh, Runway 22. There's the X-32. And there's our airplane. And uh, yeah, I broke protocol and waved to the photographer. As I said, Tony's a dear friend. And I wanted to acknowledge his presence on the uh, side of the runway there that morning. This was a different type of takeoff. This is what we call a finger three. Uh, the X-32 had about a 10 second lead and then the two chase planes followed and it was a takeoff to the west out to the operating area here you see the x-32 with gear in transit and at altitude uh, we went to the high corridor which is 35,000 feet paralleling highway 58 north of the base and the airplane uh, went through a series of uh, speed runs and uh, culminating with the uh, final run to Mach 1 this is a Boeing photographer's photo, uh, just to give you a better view of the airplane. And uh, this is a different flight than ours, but he's uh, making a uh, wide base to final turn for runway 22, seen just above the cockpit of the airplane. And here's our flight. Uh, we're coming in uh, about to enter the break. And uh, there's the break for the X-32. And then the F-18, the Marine F-18, I'm sorry, the Navy F-18 followed suit. And then it was our turn. Here's the landing. And the paintings that resulted from these uh, chase missions uh, were as follows, as followed. The uh, X-35 in pre-contact title was first aerial refueling of the X-35. For the Boeing X-32, a shot of it over the base. And this was entitled First Supersonic Flight of the X-32. Well, on October 26, 2001, the Lockheed Martin team was selected as the winner of the flyoff competition. Lockheed had an impressive history building tactical fighter and stealth aircraft, including two currently in the Air Force inventory. Both Northrop and Grumman shared a rich history producing fighters, for the Air Force and the Navy. While BAE Systems, formerly British Aerospace Corporation, was an amalgamation of nearly every British aircraft manufacturer with an impressive array of products, including uh, wide experience in jet-powered vertical flight with the brilliant and revolutionary Hawker Sidley Kestrel and operational Harrier. The designation should have been F-24. It was the next number <clears throat> in rotation in the fighter domain. But for whatever reason, the X-35 became the F-35. But this is kind of neat. The uh, name Lightning II, I've done other videos talking about naming of airplanes. And generally, the second version of any airplane 
<clears throat> kind of infers that they just couldn't come up with anything better than something two. In this case, however, uh, there's, there's an exception. And uh, kudos to the team. The Lightning II signifies both the Lockheed P-38 Lightning of World War II and the British Aerospace Corporation Lightning, Great Britain's first Mach 2 aircraft. By the way, if you wonder what the prototype looked like, here it is, the English Electric P-1. So, how do we remember all the designations? Well, the U.S. Air Force F-35A, think of A for Air Force, that's easy enough. And again, this is a land-based aircraft, uh, internal weapons bays, and a wide array of very advanced weapon systems, and all the sensors, and the latest in stealth technology. For the Navy, the F-35C, and you can remember that, C for carrier. And that leaves the Marine Corps F-35B. And again, this is uh, almost like a transformer type aircraft with uh, all sorts of interesting geometry on the engine, lift fan, so on. And there's a nice formation shot of the Marine aircraft. If you like uh, crunching numbers, I'm going to leave this on the screen for a bit and you can freeze it and look at the different specs. But this is a comparison of the X-35 with the F-35. And uh, to Lockheed's credit, it, uh, they're, it's qu they're quite similar. There are a few minor uh, differences in specifications, engine power, so on and so forth. But they're pretty close. The airplane is <clears throat> rated to Mach 1.6 and has a max G load of 9. Airplane is used by the uh, U.S. Air Force, Royal Air Force and Navy, <clears throat> Royal Australian and Royal Canadian Air Forces, and Japan and the other countries that you see listed as well. This is a good photo that demonstrates the edict. If it looks right, it flies right. Good looking airplane. So there you have it. A look at the Joint Strike Fighter flyoff competition, selection of the winner, and the F-35 Lightning II. Special thanks to the great people who made this uh, presentation possible and the organizations that supported this effort and allowed me to fly with both Joint Strike Fighter candidates. Thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We certainly enjoy bringing them to you, and we look forward to a lot of new programs in the year ahead. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, we'd love having you on board. Please do hit the like button on the way out. And uh, as always, until next time, take care.